Here's everything that we're going to need for our project. We need a packet of art clay paper type. This comes in 10 grams. We're not going to use it all, so you will have some left over for additional project if you want, maybe a matching pendant. You can see here it does say for kiln firing only. For small pieces of jewellery, it is fine to torch fire, so you can use a torch that's suitable for metal clay together with a firing brick. We're also going to need some art clay silver paste, and to apply that we will need a paintbrush that has bristles that are uh, non-shed. A non-stick Teflon work surface to work on. Two craft punches in sizes of your choice. This is a small and a medium. You can get these in all sorts of different designs, but I quite like these. So I'm gonna use these today. And this is the size of flower that they cut out. We're gonna need two ear wires and some jump rings and some snipe nose pliers to open and close the jump rings. The last thing we'll need is a brass brush to clean our piece after firing. That will be used with just some normal washing up liquid and water. So let's start our project. Before you start your project, you may want to plan it out if you're using cutters like I've got here. I cut out different shapes and then arranged them. I knew I wanted a sort of a waterfall of flowers, but what's key with your design is that you have to make sure that you've got overlapping areas that you'll be able to paste the paper together to make it into a solid piece of metal. So you will need to make sure you've got overlapping areas. So for example, if I just to have that. That's not going to be good enough because I haven't got enough contact area. So you do have to make sure that there's some overlapping and you can play with that as much as you want, but just make sure that you've got enough contact point. The other thing is, especially if you're using this one, this shape, I need to have a hole to put my earring wires and really these edges here are way too tiny for that. So I'm gonna to have to put a hole in the middle here so just bear that in mind that that is going to be the hole there and then you will need to come up for your ear wire so your top one really needs to be positioned so that you can come straight up between those petals so once you've got your design together you need to open your art clay paper so inside you'll find some instructions in both Japanese and English and then also a muslin bag that contains the silver. Keep that because that's what you're going to store any unused silver in. So what I'm going to do now is I want to cut out all of the um, little shapes that I need for my earrings. What I like about these cutters is if I turn it over, you can actually, if, if I slide the paper art clay in, you can see when it's behind the design and when it's not. Now that also means that I can make the best use out of my paper because I will reduce the wastage. It is actually quite difficult to cut though like this, but let's have a go and see if I can do it. So I'm going to slide the paper in. I'm going to try and get it so that it's as near to the edge as possible so that I don't have much wastage. That's about there. And then I'm going to depress. And you can see it's cut my first shape out for me. Here are all my shapes cut out now and you'll see that I've only used about a quarter of this sheet. So this is for one pair of earrings and I can certainly get another pair of earrings and a pendant from this, possibly even a bit more. What you will notice is that there are some shapes that have been cut out that aren't going to be used. Um, unfortunately, unlike metal clay, you can't reconstitute this, but you could keep this and cut out tiny weeny shapes for other projects and add to that. But for this project, we're just going to lay those to one side. 
So I've cut four of the larger flowers and three of the smaller flowers. You'll notice with this petal here, I've just managed to cut the edge off during punching it out. So I'm going to disguise that. I'm going to make this my top petal, making sure I need to have a hole in there. And then what I will do to disguise it, I will put another daisy over the top and then that will hide any imperfections. So I'm now going to join these pieces together with some paste. These have already been pasted together, so let me show you how to do that. You need your paintbrush and some paste, and these have already been joined, so I know that I want to put this one about there. So I'm going to put some paste on the back of at least three petals, and the inner bit. You can see I'm hardly using any paste at all. I'm then going to literally just put it over where I want it to go. Now be careful because what you don't want is you don't want to get some extra paste showing. So with a dry paintbrush, quickly go and take any excess away. and press very gently. Now that has literally taken me less than five minutes to put together. And if I just show you here, you can see it's already joined. And if I turn it over, that's the back and you can see where the paste is still wet. Not recommended you do that by the way. So if I put that down there now, press gently and I'm going to leave that to dry for 24 hours before firing. Here are my earrings now after they've been fired and I've made, I've done some work on this one but this one I've left so that you can see what it looks like after the firing process. So if we just have a look, the first main difference is that I've done some work and you can see this has a gorgeous mirror finish, a really high polish. I've also enlarged the hole here and added two jump rings and an ear wire. If you don't want shepherd's hook wires, because of course this will then dangle, if you don't want that look, you can use a earring stud type that you just put through and the ball at the front will create a really nice center for that daisy. So how we achieve that look is we get our piece straight out of the firing process and you can see it's white and it's matte and dull. That's because the particles of the silver are standing up and we need to get the particles to lay down to reveal the silver underneath. If you were to leave your earring just like this, what would happen is um, over time, it, the particles would lay down with friction or rubbing and you would find that the silver would be revealed underneath. So the first step in this process is you get a wire brush, a brass brush, you dip it in some soapy water and you literally just, oops, you literally just brush across the surface. And you do this with the piece laying down because you want to give it some extra support. And you dip it in the water and go backwards and forth until you're happy. If I just show you that little bit that's already been done now. And you can see that end flower has already started to take on a mirror shine and the rest of the earring is white. To get that even more of a shine, you can use an agate burnisher and you just, after wire brushing, wipe it across the surface. Now, these can scratch, so be careful how you do this. Alternatively, if you don't have an agate burnisher, you can use a household spoon. And it does exactly the same job. You can just wipe that across the surface. And if we look at it now, I hope the camera can pick up that it's even more shiny and silver looking. 
So you'd carry on doing that for the front and the back. The next job is that you need to enlarge the hole, which will have shrunk during the firing process. Your metal clay pick is fine for this, or you can drill it if you want. It's absolutely up to you. But I find it's just as easy to thread the metal clay pick through and supporting that top daisy, just gently twisting. And you do this really slowly and taking your time because you can bend this metal out of shape. So you don't want to do that. So you just want to keep twisting and turning until you get to about a quarter of the way down the pick. It does take some time, so I won't do that all now, but you get the idea. You can also just give it a bit of a wiggle if you want, and that also helps to enlarge the hole. If it's got a little bit out of shape, you can just get your spoon and push it down again. When the hole is large enough, you want to open and close your jump ring. So you open your first jump ring, thread it through the hole and close it using your pliers. Attach another jump ring to that one and also the shepherd's hook ear wire. So this is what it will look like. Now make sure that at the top here, when the earring is to be worn, that you've come up through the center of two petals so that it's straight on. And there are my two jump rings and the ear wire is attached. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's inspired you to use the silver art paper type. I'd love to hear and see any projects that you make. If, you'd if you've got any questions, please leave the comments below. If you want to see more of my work, please visit www.artisan-alchemy.net. All of these products that you can see that I've used in this video today can be purchased at www.metalclay.co.uk, with the exception, of course, of the spoon. Thank you for watching.